Time to go see the new merch. Okay, all the merch that we have, we are currently at 290. Is it is it like carrying cinder blocks? I feel it. It feels like there's one mm -hmm. giant cinder block in this. Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna have to weigh this when we get home. Coronavirus! Coronavirus! We are back. It is Sunday. Now last week it was slam packed. From what I'm seeing right now, it's looking a little slower than last week. At this time, there's normally a giant Halloween Horror Night sign with all the houses. Sadly, there's nothing. Uh, Minions is currently, I haven't seen this yet, a virtual queue now. There's a tribute store. Normally there's a giant line, but I guess it's just a straight walk-in. Okay, never mind. The tribute store queue line is going through Jimmy Fallon. I guess they're gonna have the queue going all the way backstage. See, the line is just to keep the experience of Halloween Horror Nights, just waiting in long lines to get into a house. Yeah, wearing a black t-shirt was not a good idea today. We are baking in the sun. Okay, we are now being sent over here. We're getting closer to the tribute store. We're almost in there. It's uh, been like 40 minutes. Sure. We're going in. Oh, here we go. Starting to smell like Horror Nights. Oh my God. Oh, that's awesome. Look at Frankenstein right there. Like that, some green goop underneath. We used to do these at like the zoos and like tourist traps. It's only gonna be six dollars. Going into room number two now. Ooh, okay, this is like all the icons. Ooh, wow, look at Jack, f***ing terrifying. coffin of Beetlejuice right there. Oh my god. So terrifying. Oh snap. No. That's awesome. This is like the uh, tree that Beetlejuice hits. They have flowers for Adam. Get your own little witch hat. And then they have flowers for Barbara. And you kind of see what the different merch looks like with the black light on them. And they have some snacks with the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man mask. They have a giant wall of all the different masks that Universal is selling. Oh, this is funny. Where the register is now serving. Oh, man. Well, what little Easter eggs do they have over here? The sandworm incidents increased 13% from last year. Look, even the door. Yeah, just like <laughs> So good. This, it just makes me so upset that we, we're not able to walk through the house, but next year it's gonna be amazing. Oh, it's like the waiting room. Yes. As you can see, they are now serving number three. I think they have a while to wait. Okay, uh, Greg Nicotero just walked by us walking in the tribute store. The, he's the director of The Walking Dead and a bunch of horror movies. What? Hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you might not know who Greg Nicotero is. I'm a huge fan of his work. He's one of, like, the kings of special effects and special makeup effects in Hollywood. So many major blockbusters and so many horror movies Greg has worked on. Now, the one you probably know him from, he's an executive producer and in charge of all the makeup effects for The Walking Dead. I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Yes, The Walking Dead is still going. On. Now, Greg is a big fan of Universal. He's a big fan of Jaws. Back when Jaws first came out, Universal Studios in Hollywood, they casted a giant mold of the original mold from the Jaws movie, and you could take a picture with it. That Bruce then ended up in a junkyard for years, and Greg and his team are currently restoring it for a museum. Okay, there's your fun little fact now. Uh, back to the video. That was crazy. I was like, he's with his daughter, so I was like, oh my god, wait, is that him? The daughters gave me the look like, yeah, that's him. I was like, oh my god. But they walked right in. That was crazy. I just saw Greg Nicotero. A key lime tart? Yeah, it's a key lime, uh... Looks like a mummy. It's a mummy. All right, Frank, how is it? Does it taste like the Key West? Mm -hmm. No, not really, but it's good. All right, then Allison got a little cake pop. It's starting to like me. <laughs> Allison, what's on the inside? Oh, it's just a chocolate cake, cake pop? It's very good, but the, I think the cake pop at Epcot was better. Really? Because the, the cake pop at Epcot was cold. Mm. It's more like a mousse. This is like an actual piece of cake. 
Let's see how these little beating hearts are. They said they're sour. So I'm like, oh, oh god. <laughs> they said to, to make them look beating, there's little, uh, like, they shoot up air to make them look like they're beating. It's like a, like a sour cough syrup. That's what it tastes like. We got the vegan brownie. He looks really good. It's like um, the like kids purple. cuisine like brownie that you make in the microwave. <laughs> yeah, uh, not, not the best vegan brownie I've had. By the hearts, I'd give like a 6.5. The brownie, I'd give a 6 out of 10. It tastes like the microwave kid cuisine brownie. And then let's see the little Frankenstein that we got. Oh, look at him. Now, it'd be cool if they had all the different Universal monsters that you could collect. On the back, it says Universal Studios. I'm gonna, I gotta get like scissors to clip off the extra plastic. If you remember, the queue for Transformers went all the way into the extended queue. I'm glad to see it's not at 110 minutes like last week. As you can see, the Blues Brothers have a big crowd. Now, George, I see that grin on your face. I know why you're grinning, because they brought pizza fries back. Now, normally the pizza fries are located over by E.T. at the, uh, what is it, the Woody Woodpecker Kids, Kids Pizza Place, but they have it at Louie's Bar and Grill now. So the mummy's right down there, and then Louie's Bar and Grill is right here. So they've seated us at our little table. All right, let's uh, see how the mobile ordering goes this time. I kind of know the, the problems and the kinks about it so far. I'm to the mobile order portion. It's labeled correctly. It says Louie's Italian Restaurant. Where the, where the pizza fries? What? I don't see them. Okay, Universal, another thing. Come on, guys. All right, so I'm like, I'm confused. There's no pizza fries. I'm looking for the picture. There's no pictures for it. So let's hit. Okay, so last time we didn't get our annual pass holder discount. So what I learned is my annual pass is already connected to this, but you have to literally hit apply pass holder discount, and then you have to scan the back of your annual pass. So a team member still has to come around to each table, and then they uh, will look at the number, your order number that is given, and then they call it back to the kitchen for them to start preparing it. Guys, we got it. <laughs> I miss pizza fries. It looks, it looks bomb. It looks like picture perfect, 10 out of 10. So you got sausage, pepperoni, mozzarella, crinkle cut fries. Oh, oh my god, oh. look at that. Oh, oh, that's some food porn right there. Pizza tots that we had over at Seuss were not that good. These pizza fries, 10 out of 10, a must get if you're visiting Universal. All right, we just finished. Uh, the mobile ordering system was still kind of the same, but the manager in there, such an amazing team member. Thank you for making the magic. If you have a chance, go get the pizza fries. It's so good. Okay, it's time to go see the new merch. Back, they have tons of new stuff. They have the Artisan series of Jack. It's like a baseball tee. A bunch of new little magnets. Oh, this is a new shirt of Frankenstein. I haven't seen that one yet. And then Chris has sent me a giant order. I think I'm gonna get the Beetlejuice hat. That one's pretty cool. We got the Beetlejuice shirt, the sandworm sock, the mask, the keychain. Okay, this is really good. The recently deceased handbook as a lunchbox. That's amazing. And then they have the, just a little journal to write in. $25, that's not too bad. Oh my god, Chris is going to want this all. And then we have the retro glasses, but of the different icons, the caretaker, the director, the storyteller, and our boy Jack. And if you spend $175, you can get a non-interactive wand. Select wand, so who knows what it is. Apparently they don't have shopping carts at the Universal store. Okay, all the merch that we have, we are currently at 290. Is it like carrying cinder blocks? Feel it. It feels like there's one oh. giant cinder block in this. Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna have to weigh this when we get home. Here's our giant CVS receipt for Chris. I hope you enjoy this, buddy. Allison's <laughs> having a good workout today. It's good exercise, Chris. <laughs> we love you, Chris. Merry yes. Christmas. And since we spent over $175, we actually spent like $300, um, we got a free wand. It's not an interactive wand, it's just a plain Death Eater wand, but yeah, it was like 50 bucks. We got it for free. We're in Islands right now. I had to drop Chris's stuff off at uh, Package Pickup. I didn't know they did that here. You just pick it up on the way out. Good job, Chris. You didn't have to pay full price for any of that Halloween Horror Nights merch because Kevin had his annual pass discount. Time to go into this version of Hogmeade's Ollivanders. All right, Frank, are you ready? No. Oh, this one is different. They have all the wands in here. Huh. Oh, it looks just like in the movie. Welcome to all of us. Mm. Makers of fine wands since 382 BC. And the wand keeper. Here the wand chooses the wizard. Now who's here for the wand? This man right I here. Yes, I am. <laughs> we <laughs> offered you his tribute. You more clearly. Stay right here. Yes, thank okay. you. Now you may know that every Olivana wand has a form of a powerful magical substance. Mm -hmm. We use uniform hairs, phoenix tail feathers, and the heartstrings of dragons. 
No to all of under wands are the same, just as no two unicorns, dragons, or phoenixes are quite the same. You see those flowers up there? I would like you to water them for me by waving your wand at them and saying, Aguamente. Aguamente. Frank, <laughs> what? E.T. wouldn't like that. Interesting, <laughs> but um, not exactly what we were looking for. And say Lumos. Lumos. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Meteorology! Good job, Frank. We're proud of you. Oh. And that was awesome. you go. Please feel free to peruse the entire one collection by continuing through this door. Oh, this is totally different. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. What do you think? That, that was a cool, cool show. You were chosen. I was. No, I chose one out of three. What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the owls that they have up there. Oh my gosh. I'm looking here. Oh, is he sleeping? No. <laughs> it, just, it just scared the crap out of me. It woke up and jumped at me. <laughs> that was so scary. I love that the broomstick. Parked up like locked up and flying. Nice. All right, now just a little update on the Velocicoaster. Dude, it is changing like every hour. Look at the coaster through this angle. Now, Hagrid's is my favorite roller coaster of all time. I think the Velocicoaster is gonna blow it out of the water. Our boy Frank just went running. He ran over to the splash zone. I'm just gonna let him get full on baptized. Oh God. Oh God, it just went everywhere. Oh my God, Frank, is that what you wanted? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I wanted. Oh my God, that was awesome. And if you're worried about the mail in uh, that one, they do have a mailbox right here. We're leaving islands, we're gonna go eat at Breadbox tonight. Here is Breadbox. It's up here by Moe's. Allison said it's really good. We'll see. Okay, I think I'm gonna get the smoky brisket. Hickory smoked, shaved thin, smoked gouda, caramelized onion. I'm gonna get it without the onions. Horseradish cream on multigrain. What? These are swings? I got no onions and I switched it to uh, white bread instead of the multigrain. So they bring it to you in like a little to-go box. So much quicker than uh, the universal mobile ordering. All right, this thing is like solid. Oh my God. My first time at Breadbox. I love the design. The uh, the fries were just, eh, nothing special, but man, that brisket sandwich, nine out of 10, incredible. If you're coming to City Walk, go get that brisket sandwich, not on wheat, on white. Now guys, currently we're back at home. Uh, I just weighed the bag and it's 11 pounds of merch. A little rundown of what Chris got before I kind of talk about all the Halloween Horror Nights rumors and everything. All right, first off, he got the uh, socks. Then I picked him up the retro shirt and the Beetlejuice shirt, the original Fright Night shirt, and then the handbook for the recently deceased. Chris can jot down all of his spoopy little memories. And then Chris also got a set of the uh, Icon retro glasses. Now let's kind of talk about what happened with Halloween Horror Nights. Why was it actually canceled? From what I was told is that it was gonna happen. They went out, they did the casting calls, all the scare actors were hired, but they would be in limited capacity, the scare actors would be wearing masks, only a certain amount of guests were allowed through a house at a certain time, they created like a virtual queue app, and you would kind of pick and choose which houses you wanted to visit, and it would give you options with current wait times of what houses you could visit during that night. I'm sure you all saw Florida was a nice hot spot, I think it was like 10,000 cases in a day, like around the time that they canceled Halloween Horror Nights. Now, since there was a global pandemic, uh, Netflix, they were gonna have the Haunting of Hill House, House, which was apparently amazing. Netflix didn't want their name attached to any of the promotional art during the global pandemic, which I kind of understand. And then also the county did their safety walk through where the scare actors were gonna be located. It wasn't spread far enough away from the scare actors and the guests. So they didn't have time to rebuild the entire set. So that was kind of another nail in the coffin. So between the county coming in, the IPs not wanting their name attached, a global pandemic. That's kind of the reason Horror Nights didn't happen this year. Now let's kind of go over the, uh, the speculation map, which from what I was told was 
pretty accurate. So for the haunted houses, you would have the Universal Monsters, the Brides, so it'd be kind of all like the female versions of the classic Universal Monsters. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this is what I'm kind of iffy about. I, I'm kind of bored of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We've all seen it like a million times. Now just remember these are all rumors and stuff that I've heard. They might be true, they might not. Then for the rest of the houses, there's gonna be bedtime stories, Halloween Horror Nights icons, which I was really excited about. I heard it's gonna be like, each scene was gonna be a different icon throughout the years. Then there was gonna be Anniversary House, which was gonna be some of the greatest hits from some of the haunted houses throughout the years. Pumpkin Origin, Mannequin Theater, Haunting a Hill House. That house was apparently incredible. There's always like a one really fun, silly house, and that was gonna be Beetlejuice. And then Billie Eilish, or as Jared likes to say, Billie Eilish. I don't know how I feel about that house. Your music videos are creepy, so it could be good. But if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button because Alice and I go visit Universal Studios every single weekend. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Now, some of you guys might not even be a fan of haunted houses and scary attractions, but when it comes to the Orlando economy, uh, Universal really relies on Halloween Horror Nights. It brings in a large, large revenue, not only for Universal, it brings people in to visit Disney and all the hotels and restaurants around the area. So it was a huge blow when and Not So Scary was canceled and Halloween Horror Nights was canceled. As I will say again, things are not very good down here for the Orlando economy. If you'd like to donate to my Patreon, it's right down there. And if you guys are part of my Patreon, I will be shipping one of you guys this little Frankenstein. Will these houses be here next year? I think some of them will. Some of the other ones like Hill House. Universal has contracts with them to only use them for a certain amount of time. We will see what happens because guys, they start planning these houses years in advance. I hope that all these houses are the exact same houses next year, but I think things could change because Universal Studios is a working studio. They film commercials and live events and where those sound stages are are currently the houses. Guys, we will see what happens. Um, I'm kind of glad it didn't happen this year because the 30th anniversary is kind of a big deal. Last year's Horror Nights uh, was, wasn't the best. So I'd rather wait and have them just go balls to the wall next year. And then for the scare zones, we really didn't know that much about the scare zones. One was supposed to be Creepshow, if you didn't know. Greg Nicotero, the guy I was talking about earlier, he's in charge of like the new reboot of Creepshow, so I think they're on like season two right now. That could have been one of the reasons why he was there at the park, kind of inspecting some of the props that they had made. You thought I didn't get to take a picture with Greg. I did run into him later in the day. I definitely nerded out seeing him, and we will end the video with the picture that I took with him. All right, I'll see you all next week, bye. There you are, the man, the myth, the legend. Thank you so much. Right. I'm excited for the season finale. Yeah. I just met Greg Nicotero. That's fucking awesome. Oh, the Hulk ride is no longer using us as a cue, so the storm force, the sign says power generators recharging.